kind of treatment came in is, well, if your stem cells are the ones that coded for this arthritis, and we don't know how many exactly you have left, do you really want to undergo um, more expensive, painful, slightly painful procedure to get your stem cells when you can just buy some that might be better than what you have? It's a debate, it's a discussion. Uh, we certainly don't have the answers, uh, but as you age, there, there's slightly less we can get, you know. This must be a discussion you must take so much time in with your patients, because, look, he nods, <laughs> yes. Because this is certainly not, not like a ABC, XYZ. Uh, obviously individual, everything is individual, but yep. I think with this, you've really got to sit there and explain it to your patient, because there's a lot of options and there's a lot to think about. We've made uh, our own pamphlet oh, um, there you go. to try and answer some of the questions. Um, the different kits that we use, they have their own brochures that we give to the patients. And so uh, it, I would say it's exceedingly rare that we would ever offer any of these treatments the first time we meet the patient. Mm -hmm. It has to be kind of pre-planned. So if they're coming for that specific treatment from one of my partners and we've had a discussion with them over the phone and it's reasonable, then maybe. But for the most part, you'd come in, we do a normal evaluation. You get, we take your story, we maybe do some x-rays or an MRI, you know, we do a physical exam to check where you are with your, talk to you about your life, what your limitations are, uh, and what are your goals and expectations? Exactly. And then, okay, well, we might try some physical therapy first, or, or uh, maybe we have you see the surgeon for a consultation to see what that option is. And then, if we're looking for another option, that's when we generally bring something like this up. If the patient brings it up to me, then I'll answer all those questions. But generally, I don't bring it up the first visit. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're there yet saying this is the first line treatment. This is what we should be offering every patient that walks in the door. We have it available and then once they come in and, and we feel it's appropriate, mm -hmm. then we have that discussion and then they go home and they think about it. And then if they you know, desire, they call and schedule that procedure. And if they have that budget too, which is important. Correct budget. Very important. All right, so we are winding down our conversation about stem cells that are used as non-surgical therapy to help orthopedic injuries, and we're going to talk about pain relief next. You're watching the Health Channel. All health, all the time, right here on South Florida PBS, and we'll be right back. We've made a lot of progress in smoking prevention. But if we don't do more, one out of every 13 children alive today will die early from smoking. That's 5.6 million precious lives we can save. Together, we can make the next generation tobacco free. Each year, an estimated 12,000 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer. Thanks to improved screening and vaccination, cervical cancer is a highly preventable and treatable cancer. Early detection is key. Women should pay close attention to their cervical health by following these guidelines. Start testing at age 21. Women between ages 21 and 29 should have a pap test done every three years. Women between the ages of 30 and 65 should have a pap test plus an HPV test done every five years. 
A woman who has been vaccinated against HPV should still follow the screening recommendations for her age group. Your particular health history may dictate a different screening schedule for cervical cancer. Contact your primary care physician to talk about your history and schedule your next screening today. If you're at risk for type 2 diabetes, it is very important to increase your physical activity. Most people need to start slow. Get motivated by doing something you enjoy. Here are five simple steps to get moving. Number five, exercise while you watch TV. You can do arm or leg lifts. Simple weights or canned goods can be used. Number four, take the stairs. Start slow. It raises your heartbeat and builds muscle strength. It also works your lungs and waistline. Number three, go outside. The world is your gym. Explore. Do things you enjoy. Discover a new park. Play catch. Bike makes a big difference. Welcome back to the Health Channel, All Health, All the Time. I'm Olga Villaverde, and I'm here with Dr. Michael Swartzen with uh, Sports Medicine Physician from Miami Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Fascinating discussion this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for being here today. Now, we've been talking about healing injuries without surgery, using the relatively new science of stem cells and how it works. Uh, I wanted to recap just a little bit. Again, one of the most common reasons people come to see you is they're in pain. Correct. So how do these therapies again, and this is important because uh, we could have some viewers who just started joining us right now and today, you know, so much pain. How do these therapies assist in reducing pain? For a couple reasons. Um, first of which, there are different reasons why people have pain. Most of them involve uh, biochemistry. The, the PRP takes care of that biochemistry with its own biochemistry. To keep it simple, mm -hmm. it fights what is causing the signals for pain. The second is you could have damage to a tissue. That tissue has nerves. So until that tissue is repaired, you're going to have pain. And so these treatments try and uh, repair or regenerate these areas that, can, that are causing you pain. Do you have a story, doctor, of someone that came in with that awful pain and thought it would never go away and how this stem cell or PRP, all of this helped? It, it, it happens on a regular basis. It does. Uh, it really, you know, I've been tracking my own data for mm -hmm. just to see because you look at some of these research uh, studies and they're saying 100% of people are getting better. Some, some numbers that are just too good to be true. And so er, if, if you were, are one of my patients and you came by, you know that we do all these questions for every patient for every visit just to see what's changed. And when I looked at my numbers for three months and six months. For you too, the, the benefits in your practice. It is. Here we are. I'm on uh, PBS. The World, health channel. Yeah, health channel, trying to, to explain this. Um, I've written a couple articles. I've been uh, speaking engagements. Um, but really, personally, the best thing is that I'm able to do something positive for my patients, which when you come in with pain, and you come in not being able to play tennis or go for a walk, um, it, it's hard, it's Fair. hard. And when I have nothing to offer you, that makes it even worse. Like I know what it is, I know why you can't do it, and it's old age, it's your genetics, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But for me to have something to offer that might be effective fantastic is fantastic now with these therapies in combination do you use medications and what kind of medications and say okay I really want to do the the PRP for my knee we would have to stop all those medications for at least two weeks uh, in order to let your body's own cells do the work um, other than that um, physical therapy is the main way that we combine medications with uh, uh, stem cell or PRP treatments. And when you talk about physical therapy, how important is that physical therapy even after you get the uh, stem cells? The physical therapy is so important that in the end, the patients come in sometimes asking, was it the PRP that did it or was it the physical therapy? <laughs> and and I, I, don't, I don't always know. Do you answer both? No, Combination? either both. And, and that's why if, if people ask that beforehand, I say, you're welcome to try the physical therapy first. Sometimes it's that good. Right. Even though 
your, your logic may say, why would it fix this? Or why would it work? It just does. Try it. If, if it doesn't, you can always do the PRP. If that doesn't work, there's probably a surgery. But there, there's always a good indication for physical therapy. Now, there's something, obviously, that doctors sometimes use, which are opioids. Mm -hmm. And we have a short package from the CDC on opioid, opioids. Let's take a look at that real quick. Prescription opioids are a type of drug used to manage pain. They include Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Morphine, among others. Some people might think prescription opioids are safer than alcohol or illegal drugs, but the truth is they carry serious risks and side effects. In fact, anyone can become addicted to prescription opioids, even when prescribed by a doctor. Abusing or misusing opioids can result in loss of control. It can affect your ability to keep a job and maintain healthy relationships. It can even lead to overdose and death. Prescription opioids can have a number of side effects, even when taken as directed. Some of those include physical dependence, increased sensitivity to pain, constipation, nausea, confusion, and depression. You can make informed decisions about your pain management. Talk to your doctor about non-opioid options like ibuprofen or acetaminophen, antidepressants, exercise, and other therapies. If your doctor prescribes opioids, ask how long you'll need to take the medicine and how you'll know when it's time to stop. Take only the amount prescribed. Talk to your doctor about all of your medications. It's very dangerous to combine opioids with certain other drugs. Talk to your doctor about all of your concerns. Follow-up is important. And then the doctor told me, I have my own public service announcement about opioids. So I'm going to give him the platform now. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. So, <laughs> if you don't know yet, the, um, uh, the governor of Florida signed a bill uh, that really tries to tackle this problem. And so HB 21, or, or uh, the opioid bill, limits physicians from prescribing opiates to only three days. So if you go to the emergency room or you go to your doctor and, or your dentist or, or anywhere else, and previously you've been prescribed 30 days worth, or 120 tablets, that's illegal starting in July, which is around the corner. And so you will only be prescribed three pills. Now, if you're a chronic pain patient, you'll need to go to a chronic pain clinic, but this just shows you that if they've taken some of that prescribing power away from physicians, um, that's the problem, the epidemic that we have. There's no way to know just looking at you or with your own personal experience, how you'll handle the opiates. You could become addicted very, very easily. It could change your life dramatically. Um, and, and it's hard. I, I would say that one of the best success stories I've had is weaning a patient off of opiates completely. That is a, a huge win because sometimes they've been taking them so long that that's their life. Thank you for pill that. to pill. That's right. So it's good news there. So we have spent almost an hour talking about stem cells and where we are today. Doctor, we don't have a lot of time, but mm -hmm. I do want you to finish this sentence for me. So I'm the patient, and I come in and I say, Doctor, I hear about these stem cells, and I really think this is for me. I'd say my answer from when I started doing this three years ago to just putting my toe in the water and saying, well, if you have no other options, this is something we could try at the very end to really saying this seems like a legitimate treatment option uh, for various things, depending on what you have, that we would offer you. And, and the chances of success are pretty good. And it looks like the future is pretty bright with some, it does. It does. some of these stem cells and what they will be giving us for the future. I you seem to be very excited about I'm it. I'm very excited. I, I hope this is a cure, really, for a lot of the problems that people have when they come into my office. Especially with the spinal cord injuries in the Miami Project. Thank you so much for your time. Olga, As thank always, you so much for having us. Thank you very much. Two for two with Dr. Swartzen. He's fantastic. Thank you so okay. much, Doctor. We hope you enjoyed today's show on stem cells. Again, this is the Health Channel, All Health All the Time. Remember to visit our website, allhealthallthetime.com, if you'd like to ask questions to our experts or to find out more about the Health Channel. I'm Olga Viaverdi, and we hope to see you next time. Take care.
The Health Channel is made possible by the continued leadership and generous support of the Eunice Joyce Gardner Charitable Foundation and the Kessler Family Foundation. too young to get a mammogram and I had no family history and the lump was probably just nothing and I sat in that waiting room talking to women and and there were about 10 of us and I casually joked with another woman I can't believe that one in eight women will be diagnosed in breast cancer there are 10 of us in this room today she was fairly certain that I had breast cancer when I heard my grandmother was sick I knew I had to take care of her more. I heard the three most horrific words anybody could ever hear. You have cancer. They were giving me life-changing, devastating news. But at the same time, they were giving me a plan. I felt very blessed to be here in Miami and to have a network of doctors. Cancer treatment is ugly. The way Baptist treats you as a person is beautiful. I, I just knew in my gut that I was going to be okay. When you finish radiation, you ring a bell. Pretty much the entire staff of MCI showed up. Your dream team is out there. La siento como una persona como amigas, más que, que doctores. If I waited, I wouldn't be here today. Early detection is incredibly important. Know your body. Go and see your doctor, get the mammogram, get checked. I can't stress enough how important it is to be your own advocate. Early detection saved my life. So many people helped me, and now it's my turn to give back. There's part of myself that I lost, and I, I found it after. My experiences in Miami Cancer Institute have been very good. Los tratamientos han sido sensacionales. Miami Cancer Institute is Disney for cancer patients. Embrace tomorrow. Programme su mammografía hoy. Abrace el mañana. Schedule your mammogram today. Welcome to the Health Channel, all health all the time. I'm Olga Villaverde coming to you from the Baptist Health South Florida studios right here in Coral Gables. You know, bringing a baby into the world is so exciting for new parents, but learning that your baby may have a disability, uh, maybe a serious complication, or maybe could be coming into the world a bit ill. This can be very difficult for a parent, hard to comprehend, and your emotions can run through the gamut from uh, grief, fear, disbelief, and sometimes even anger. But it's important to stress that you're not alone. In fact, it's okay to ask for help from friends and family, even others in your community. So joining us today is Carla Ritchie. She is publisher for the Miami Kids Magazine. This month's edition focuses on family and providing information for some families who may need a starting point for their children with disabilities. Welcome, Carla. Thank you, Olga. Very happy to be here. And I'm so thrilled you're here, and I find this to be such an important uh, cover and we're going to talk a lot about it, but helping uh, kids with special needs and, and, and giving them that opportunity that they can and they will succeed. Yes. So that is imperative. But before we dive into all the options that are out there, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, tell me about yourself and the Miami Kids magazine. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm a Peruvian American citizen. Peru. Yes, arriba Peru. Yeah, you go. <laughs> De Lima. De Lima. De Lima, yeah. Peru. Okay. <laughs> and um, I'm a mother of two kids. My oldest is seven and my youngest is two, turning three tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> Nice. Uh, yes. Is it a girl or boy? It's a girl. Nice. Yeah. Felicidades. It's Kenneth and Valeria, thank nice. you. Nice. And, uh, well, I live here for many years, and uh, 
I started the magazine because when I was pregnant, I had so many questions. And then when you go online, you see so much information that is sometimes overwhelmed. So mm -hmm. I said, I would like to have a guide or a, a kind of a resource where I can find all this information accurate in one place. So I start writing notes on a notepad and uh, during my whole pregnancy when my son born and then my second kid, Valeria, born. And then when she turns one, I said, this is time for launching the magazine and uh, that's here. The reality, Miami Kids Magazine. And I know you uh, have a very special one that you've been wanting to share for a while. Uh, we're going to talk about the cover in just a moment, but what is the whole message here in this one? Well, basically, this special issue, um, I wanted to do it for a long time. It means a lot for, uh, a lot for me because I see the the suffering on parents with kids with special needs, mm -hmm. and we're dedicating this issue uh, for them so they can find um, all the information on our special assistant guide and during uh, the articles that we have in the magazine so they can they feel that they have somebody an organization and company that they can relate and they can trust that's why we have the magazine and, and I wanted to show the cover very uh, very quickly and I know you've seen it already but uh, this is a very near and dear friend of mine Virginia Jacko they call her the blind visionary there she is always stunning in red she loves red yeah my favorite color too she is the first blind CEO at Miami Lighthouse for the Blind. She has transformed that place. She is a pioneer. Her courage, uh, she lost her sight in the late 30s. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. But what I love about the cover and what I love about the children is, uh, and what I love about the article, and let me see where I wrote it down. It says uh, you include children with disabilities. They dance. They have an amazing time. And what's so sweet is, and this is what I love, a common term for kids born with complications is special needs. But your magazine uses a different word, exceptional. I like that. Exceptional yeah. kids. What does that mean to you? Yeah, well, definitely sometimes the word special needs or they, they, they it's a cliche. So we want to mention change the word and use exceptional because it's out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. These kids are so special and we have to integrate it in society. And when you when we do these events, as you mentioned before, we feel so happy that we could see the smile mm -hmm. on parents when, when they see their kids interacting with, with everybody. And they're part of the, you can see now a video of one of our events, our kids dancing. Um, yeah, so it's so nice. Even if we feel so uh, grateful, if at least one family read the magazine and find an answer of their questions that's so gratifying for us it's absolutely. amazing absolutely yeah. and speaking of uh, answers so many parents have questions so let's talk about being a parent of an exceptional kid it means your weekly schedule it may include therapy sessions frequent doctor visits uh, who knows dealing with insurance companies which like if you need to do that you know and of course the financial commitment it can be overwhelming not to mention it affects the amount of sleep you get uh, it could put a strain on the marriage but there are lots of resources out there that can provide invaluable information and support so let's talk about some of them uh, we have a chart to show a graphic I should say and let's talk about some of these websites that can maybe help someone out there right now Call yes us. absolutely well when we uh, feature all these pages on the magazine uh, you can find different employment resources for, for personal with disabilities, uh, how to talk with kids about bullying, um, how to improve the life of parents. As you said before, this is not only for the kid with, have, with the disabilities, it's also for the whole family. So in these pages, you can find the advice that the parents need as a family. The siblings, sometimes they get aside and they need to integrate. It's very important, the marriage, uh, the, communica the communication, the uh, communication, between the parents sometimes it's all these problems economical the pressure that the parent has um, so they need to maintain the communication that is so important right and the first one obviously has to deal with autism uh, family voices what is that one well family voices is an organization that they talk for part that they, they give um, a voice advices okay. for parents and okay. then how to how to deal with the kids and CEC SPED what's that one yeah well those are basically most of them have the same uh, the same function yes the same function to provide the information for parents for for siblings also some of them they have uh, information 
and for authorities, you know, uh, that they, they this kind of uh, um, situations needed a specialist. And what would you say is the, is, uh, there's, there, there's probably many, but the main thing that parents and families are looking for? Well, I will say the psychological. Yes. Um, resource for 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 them because it's important the parents get together that they maintain the love if you give love to your kids they're gonna feel it and you know at home is the first place where they feel secure so i think it's important to maintain that communication also other things that that people send us emails or write to the website uh, ask they ask questions about where should i cut the hair for my kids and sometimes it's like who thinks about those but kids with special needs need a special treatment they need to be personnel that is certified that they are patient with the kids for example snippet it is it's a company that they uh, have well they do the the haircut they have ot toys for them they have like um speakers so they get entertained and it's people that are going to be on, on on next to the parents and with the kids and i noticed here that uh, there's a special assistance guide that you have in the magazine uh with with organizations that can also aid families to get help for their loved ones we're actually going to be talking to three of them and they are Parent to Parent, Best Buddies, and the Miami Lighthouse for the Blind later in the show. Let's go through some of the other ones that we see here. Crystal Organization, Florida Rehab, Professional Group, Family Network of Disabilities, Succeed. I like that one. I like the word. Yes, what do these right? do? Well, for example, Succeed. Uh, this is a really good private um, organization. That what they do is they have intensive therapy for kids. They have in one place, PTOT, a speech. Uh, they have swallowing disorder. Uh, um, treatments and they put the kids early in the morning and they leave at one it's like a preschool uh, and but it's all uh, with therapist this is for example one we have different organization public with, with the public system and some other private uh, for example we have therapists for kids that they do individual classes um, for, for the kids or the same OT, PT, mm -hmm. all these kind of things, um, and also on, on classes for groups. It's all fantastic. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm going through all this, and it's just so helpful for, for so many parents to, to go through it. We're going to actually meet now Bernard. He is a person with disabilities who fully participates in life, which is exactly the goal of these programs because they are, what's that word again? Exceptional. 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 Yes. Let's hear his story. Life brings on a challenge, but when you get a challenge in front of you, you have to deal with it and find a way around it. And my life is about me doing what I want to, when I want to. I may not be able to do it the way that the other person does, but I get it done. I always wake up and I say, God, thank you for waking me up. It gives me another day to get it right. And it gives me another day to teach these folks in society that people with disabilities do have a life. Keisha's been a good support person. We like family. I have to, to help him uh, get ready in the morning. I do transfers because he's not able to do it on his own. She's like my right hand. I wish I had a 24 hours a day, but that don't work like that. He amazes me sometimes. He does a lot of things that I'm like, oh gosh, I couldn't do it. You know, speaking in front of people and and all the traveling and just fighting for what he believes in. And I just, I just, my hat is off to him. All right, Mr. B. I do have a disability, but I also have capabilities to get around my disability. Well, a lot of people always tell me, you can't do this, you can't do that. I've never been in an institution. I've always been out in the community, and I've always helped people get out of institutions. People with disabilities might need help with getting out of bed, might need help with dressing or bathing. We still want to be independent and make choices and not be locked away in institutions where we have to be on someone else's schedule. The whole medical way of looking at things is different from the independent living way, which says people with disabilities are the experts in their own lives. They know what they need. We all know what we need best for ourselves. A 
Some people have lived at home their whole life. They've been told that they can't live on their own, they can't live independently. Then they'll see Bernard, they see that he's living on his own. But they might be afraid to take the train somewhere or go somewhere, and he'll take them. He's a mentor to lots of people. We got to get people out of that old mentality that people with disabilities should not be seen or heard. Disability is not special. It's just part of the human existence. All of us, sooner or later, are likely to have disability. Some people have their sooners, some people have their latest. Even if I heard, I gotta do what I gotta do. Because there's people out in the community and they need to help. And it gives me a privilege to see other people do what people say couldn't be done. And I guess that's why I'm such a fighter. Mm. Wow. Exceptional. Yeah. Focuses on his abilities, not his disabilities. Exactly. What an inspiring human being. Right. And as a uh, <laughs> parent, you know, you feel these things. You have to accept. You as a parent, you need to teach your kids to accept others and be together. Absolutely. That's so important. Well, we're going to take a quick break. God bless you, Bernard. I hope you're watching. God bless you. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We mentioned some of those organizations that help families with exceptional kids. And next, we're going to be joined by Isabel Garcia, the CEO and founder of Parent to Parent Miami. So stick around for that. You're watching the Health Channel, All Health All the Time on South Florida PBS, where you can actually watch inspirational stories that just make you so happy. Please call us using the toll-free number 855-796-4475. Be sure to visit our website, allhealthtv.com, and we'll be right back. If you're not paying attention to your bank's interest rate, you might be getting shortchanged. The average interest rate on savings accounts is 0.08%, but some of the largest financial institutions pay as little as 0.01%. Online banks like Ally have the highest rates of return at a whopping 1.90%. As an online bank with no physical branches, we're able to pass that savings back to our customers through consistently competitive rates. On an average $5,000 savings account, that could mean the difference between earning 50 cents or 100 bucks. For more, go to ally.com. C stands for courage. Collaboration. Compassion. And sometimes even cuddly. At Miami Cancer Institute, C also stands for Cure. World-class cancer care, right here at home. Learn more at MiamiCancerInstitute.com. the most amazing gift that you can give someone. You see, individuals have an opportunity for their lives that they would never have again. The purpose of clinical research is to help understand how the human body works and how health and disease come about. So we want to understand what makes good health, I think women's participation in clinical trials is extremely important because we are have an entirely different set of issues, whether whatever body system you're working with, it's different from a man and from a child. So there are certainly differences there that we need to understand and focus and realize that are specific to women. Science has shown and taught us that men and women are different in, in a variety of ways beyond the obvious differences. Uh, our organs are different, our level of our hormones are different, we respond to treatments and medications differently. Um, 
based on those findings, every single cell in a woman or a man's body is a male or a female cell. And those cells respond differently to different uh, triggers, to different treatments, and to the environment. Welcome back to the Health Channel, All Health All the Time. I'm Olga Villaverde, and with us is Carla Ritchie, publisher for the Miami Kids Magazine, as well as Isabel Garcia, CEO and founder of Parent to Parent of Miami. If you have a question for any of these uh, gorgeous ladies, please call us using the toll-free number 855-796-4475. We would love to hear from you. So, welcome, Isabel. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, so first let's talk about uh, the resources, and, and let's talk about your magazine, Parent to Parent, what is that? Well, Parent to Parent is not a magazine. Okay, it's not a magazine. <laughs> well, thank you for clarifying that. Let me clarify that. It's an we organization. It's a nonprofit that okay. was founded in 1986 with the vision of providing hope, help, and support for families who had children with disabilities. All right. So that's really how we all got together. It took a very long time for the organization to take off and secure funding. And uh, in 1998, we were funded by the Department of Education to provide the services and supports that we currently do. And then we were funded by the Children's Trust in 2004. Oh, that's fantastic. To extend right. services throughout the community. So, so you're very really changing lives, aren't you? Absolutely. That's so wonderful. Now, the vision, obviously, is to help children. Help children, their families. Their families. With the focus of the families, because just like Carla mentioned, you know, during the beginning of her interview, mm -hmm. there was really no place for, for parents of children with disabilities to access information and, and support of in course. our community. So back then, kids with cerebral palsy, just like Daniela, ended up in, in homes, in institutions, and what we really wanted was for, you know, for our kids to live in our homes, of for us to live in the community, and have more inclusive settings. I think the the, the greatest um, accomplishments that, you know, I can talk about is the fact that families are more connected now because of technology. That's we were fantastic. very isolated back I, then. I know. And, and they, now and there's so much alone, more. And now Absolutely. they don't. We, you know, don't feel as alone as we did back, you and, know, in the 80s. And do you see now, since they're communicating with each other and talking about their issues where, uh, again, they don't feel that they're alone, and they get so much of those answers uh, and those questions answered, I should say, like, where did my child go to school? Uh, will they make friends? How do you help them when they have all these questions that, you know, you service them to say, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, we got this. Absolutely. I think the, the message is that we help them pace the information that they are receiving. Initially, most families, when they're told that their child has a special need, you will see that there's very little hope for the future. And I think that's what we have seen change. As, as time has gone by. And I want to show our viewers uh, seven ways that Parent to Parent of Miami Absolutely. has been able to help out. Uh, let's show this uh, graphic, and it's just amazing all you do. Increase their knowledge of their child's disability. Uh, improve their awareness of services available in the community that meet their child's special needs. Absolutely. Join a network of other parents that may have children so with special important. needs. That's so important. Absolutely. Like I said. Connecting and, you know, we learn from other people's perspective and what other parents have experienced. That's truly what guides your, your future. You don't feel alone. You don't exactly. feel alone. Exactly. Uh, learn more about the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which a lot of people don't know about. If we can get the last three, become more involved with their child's education in school because it takes involvement and being together, uh, receive information on how to better provide a home environment that is conducive, of course, to learning and optimal Absolutely. physical, social, and emotional cognitive. That's really important. Really important. Because you got to bring it home, too. Just like we all bring it home with the homework and the tutoring and helping our children there, too, as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Schools can't do it alone. They That's need the support of the families. And the last one that you mentioned, getting involved in the community, that is the, uh, the, the greatest challenge. And that's how what we have seen that many of the families that get involved, mm -hmm. regardless of the condition, they're, they're there to just design something that's better for families that are being told today that their children are facing some type of special need. I was reading here that Parent to Parent offers a lot of workshops. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about these workshops? Our workshops go from learning about your child's disability to learning about the laws, learning how to navigate the system, the educational system, learning about the laws and regulations. 
that protect the education of children with disabilities within mm -hmm. the school system and even in the private sector for those of uh, those families that are in the private sectors there are many many services that are provided after you, the, the children reach the age of majority and if they're not involved then they won't be able to access those services uh, connecting families helping families understand about you know how to plan for the future mm -hmm. financial um, supports who's gonna you know how are we gonna prepare for college there's so much more that we can dream big about for our kids. I like that. Dream big. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which is what we all want as parents, to dream big for our children, of course. Uh, what do you think about the magazine? I've been going through it. I think it's fantastic. I mean, there's just a plethora of information for, for even myself. Absolutely. Uh, where I can learn, and if someone has a question, I can say, hey, did you pick up this magazine? Uh, I read about the, you know, exceptional children. Uh, well, how did you feel about it when you saw it? Very inclusive, because I have grandchildren, and there are lots of activities there for my grandchildren as well. But, um... I was very impressed to see that there was a focus on disabilities that are rarely spoken about. Yes. And uh, in our office, we have this young lady that has a visual impairment, and she is, in, you know, attending a program in Boston, fully paid, and all by herself, and she's having a wonderful time. And so to see that the Lighthouse for the Blind was highlighted, it was really, really special when, when I read that. I think it's really... Um, a, a plus to see that, to see the other families sharing about their, their experiences mm -hmm. and having a picture of a family that looks and feels happy regardless of how people view you. And I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to ask both of you this and, and I, I can personalize this in a very passionate way because my stepfather um, we were raised with my stepfather and uh, his son had a severe, severe, severe disabilities. And I won't go into detail, but as a child, you know, he was Pepe. He was Pepe. Mm -hmm. And we were exposed to Pepe. We, Pepe was great. But every time we went out, I would notice mm -hmm. Absolutely. the looks, the stares. And I'd be like, What's, what, what is this, mommy? So uh, do you help families in that sense with that bullying, that, that, that sense of, you know, why are you doing this? Yes. Stop looking. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, because it gets me angry. I know. <laughs> but the reality is that people look because they just don't understand. Right. They have questions. You know, most of us are afraid of crying, mm -hmm. of feelings and emotions. Everyone is afraid to experience what you are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So just the, the fear that you may also become a parent of a child with special needs is enough to build many fences around the people that so as families experience what we have experienced you know you you lose friends you yeah, know, family members stay away and it's really hard to process that early on i think i, I can see it now 35 years later mm -hmm. and i can say oh, i see why you know why people reacted the way we did mm -hmm. and where they did but um, it is, it is very challenging. Mm -hmm. Our community is not ready. And it's, it's important, I think, that, for example, if you're out and you see a kid or an adult... What happens when we yeah. come in contact with the community? But I'm glad we brought it up because I think it helps a lot of people. And, and it's that awareness with everything in life, just Absolutely. to create that awareness cool. to treat everybody equally and fairly. And, uh, and, and it's important because it, it hurt our feelings and it can hurt yes, other people's does. feelings too. Right? And you have to kind of be a little bit more respectful. I love this part here, because um, I'm going to get a little teary-eyed, and they know how I get on the show. <laughs> they start saying, oh my gosh, we're losing Olga. But uh, I love this one here. And I, if I could focus right there, yes, I can. Yes, you can. Those are three powerful words. Yes, I can. It's so fantastic to make uh, someone feel that way. Absolutely. Right. right. And it's important that the parents um, believe in that mm -hmm. and, and transmit that emotions to your kid, that we're with you. Yes, you can. I can. I'm with you. And then you have half of the battle together, you know, right. as a family. Absolutely. Right. And Olga, you know, I just want to comment on that. It's so, so important that yes, I can, because we have so many people around us telling mm -hmm. us that we can't. 
Uh -huh. That is really, really important. So that is a very important message. That's right. Take that T off <laughs> and just keep it a C-A-N. No T at the end, <laughs> ever. <laughs> All right. I know you are leaving us now. Isabel, thank you so much. I just want to remind our viewers, the organization is Parent to Parent of Miami. Thank you for everything that you do. God bless you. Thank you very much. Do appreciate Thank it. You. Great. Thank you. All right. Coming up, we talked about uh, 